we should split up. I'm not sure that's... Less chance we both get caught that way. I suppose that's true. We'll rendezvous inside. If you get a shot at Jama, you take it. Jermaine's built himself quite a fortress. I can't see any weak spots. It seems like the Grand Master spends a lot of time in the catacombs to you. You haven't heard? He thinks he's Jacques de Molay reborn or some such. You're joking. Not even a little. He's probably down there trying to commune with his past life or something equally ridiculous. I don't think de Molay is even buried. Like I said, Halt! mad That's as a... you, citizen! Got you!
sacrifice you, maggot! What the hell was that? So the prodigal assassin returns. I suspected as much when Latouche stopped sending his tax revenues. I will find you. You've become quite the thorn in my side. I assume Hobbescare was your doing as well. No matter. The direct approach from an assassin. How refreshing. No matter. His reign of terror served its purpose. The metal has...
run past me, I'll rub you out. I was right behind the bar. De la Serre as well. This is quite the reunion. Stay hidden. Keep him talking. Did you think this day would never come? That because Francois de la Serre had no sons to avenge him, Aye. you'll find what your own said? Revenge, is it? Your vision is as narrow as your father's. You want to talk? How wide a vision was your grab for power? Power? No, 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 you're smart. Power? Don't be absurd. Hello, Mr. Power? Don't be absurd. This was never about power. It's always been about control. Did your father teach you nothing? The darkness cannot protect you. Our order has become corrupt. So ob I so obsessed with clinging to the trappings of power, we abandoned our purpose. Oh. Caught in the very line we crafted to shepherd them. Caught in the very line we crafted to shepherd the masses. I'll kill you! Have you heard nothing I said? My design is larger than my own life. Do you think yourself safe in your shadows? <laughs> Through this revolution, a new order will be born. I'm almost free. I can take him. No, you can't. Not alone. Wait for me. I'm 
sorry. Elise! Bravo. You've slain the villain. That is how you cast this little morality play in your mind, isn't it? Oh, I'm not really here. I'm not really there either. At the moment, I'm bleeding out in the floor of the temple. But it seems the Father of Understanding has seen fit to give us this time to talk. Ah. A particular favorite of mine. I did not understand the visions that haunted my mind, you see. Great towers of gold, cities, shining white as silver. I thought I was going mad. And I found this place. Jack de Molay's vault. Through his writings, I understood. Understood what? Somehow, through the centuries, I was connected to Grand Master de Molay. Had I been chosen to purge the order of decadence and corruption that had set in like rot, and to wash the world clean, and restore to the truth the Father of Understanding intended. That seems to have gone over well. Prophets are seldom appreciated in their own time. Exiles in the basement forced me to reevaluate my strategy find new avenues for the realization of my purpose. No matter the cost. A new order never comes without destruction of the old. And if men are made to fear untrammeled liberty, so much the better. A brief taste of chaos will remind them why they crave obedience. Here's we part ways here. Think on this. The march of progress is slow, but it is inevitable as a glacier. All you've accomplished is to delay the inevitable. One death cannot stop the tide. Perhaps it'll not be my hand that shepherds mankind back to its proper place. But it will be someone's. Think on this when you remember her.
The creed of the Assassin Brotherhood teaches us that nothing is forbidden to us. Once, I thought that meant we were free to do as we would, to pursue our ideals no matter the cost. I understand now. Not a grant of permission, the creed is a warning. Ideals too easily give way to dogma. Dogma becomes fanaticism. No higher power sits in judgment of us. No supreme being watches to punish us for our sins. In the end, only we ourselves can guard against our obsessions. Only we can decide whether the road we walk carries too high a toll. We believe ourselves redeemers, avengers, saviors. We make war on those who oppose us, and they in turn make war on us. We dream of leaving our stamp upon the world. Even as we give our lives in a conflict that will be recorded in no history book. All that we do, all that we are, begins and ends with ourselves. So yeah, that was the final boss fight of Assassin's Creed Unity, and did you seriously expect anything more than that? Because we've seen Francois Germain before this moment, and yeah, he's pretty much what he is in his boss fight. He's just a shadowy dude in a shadowy robe doing shadowy things for no clear reason. Even when we finally get his backstory, it seems like he was... What was he doing? I think it had something to do with opening his predecessor's tomb to get some riches and doing that under the guise of the French Revolution plot and basically using the Templars to unlock Sage Wisdom. I think that's what it was. This backstory means about as much to me as the framing device plotline in any Assassin's Creed games. And while I would love to give Ubisoft credit for trying to go all out with Jermaine's assassination and give you a bit of subterfuge to make it a bit more interesting, with Arno needing to go around and sneak around the most guarded place in the entire game. I'm pretty sure I just brute forced my way in, because once you get past the outside guards, the inside is frankly embarrassingly badly guarded to the point that you could probably just kill your way through everybody in the inner chambers and then find Francois Germain on the roof because that's where you want to have your final do or die conversation with the protagonist the roof of a castle the first phase of this boss fight is uh is interesting to say the least it's a sneak and hurt challenge because I think Germain is able to block any any attacks that he's aware of and then he possibly uses his teleportation technology to you know blink around the tiny area where you're actually fighting him thankfully it's kind of short because this is a bit weird and a bit dumb it doesn't really feel like the climactic end that it should but that's a good thing because it was actually a fake out orchestrated by Jermaine to get Arno to the basement of the castle now he has to do a bit more parkour more guard assassinations and get through the underground as we'll find out later the underground parkour of this game is somehow even worse than the indoor parkour so I'm thankful to god that it wasn't any longer or more complicated than this and then we get to the final assassination that Jermaine wanted to have in the catacomb basement, and we finally get to have that climactic showdown that we were sorta of promised. It's another sneak and hurt challenge, but this time, Jermaine has acquired the power of the Sword of Eden, held by people like Julius Caesar and Charlemagne, I'm definitely sure that Ubisoft would say, and it has lightning powers. You can't actually straight up attack Jermaine, you have to sneak around him, thanks to the very obvious cover that he wanted to attack around. 
I have no idea why he wanted to fight in the middle of all these coffins when, in an undecorated hallway, he would be much more effective at killing anybody in front of him. And it is very unforgiving. There is little margin for error in this boss fight. If you ever screw up your cover mechanics, then Jermaine can kill you in about five seconds if you're out of cover, because that's just how it works. He insta-tracks any movement. He always knows where you are, but surprisingly can't figure out how to get around a coffin to actually attack you. And he just, you know, instantly attacks you anytime he can see you, and since he can see you at any time, that's pretty much the whole bit. What Arno has to do is use the times when Jermaine is recharging to go up and give him a smack in the face, whereupon he will explode into an electric cloud and then make you do the whole thing over and over and over again until the game says you can stop. And then you have a final QGE, and then you get to the twist ending where Elise chose revenge over Arno and therefore died in trying to accomplish the fact that she wanted to kill the person who killed the Lacerre, the person who orchestrated the entire thing. Even though Francois Germain is a very transparent and non-existent antagonist, he's not a good one, especially since they wanted to tie his existence into the framing device plot and the entire plotline of the game was basically to find him. The entire point of Unity was to find a sage corpse and they did, so here he is. It's kind of hilarious that, you know, Ubisoft puts all this emphasis on the pieces of Eden being almighty technology that can grant ridiculous powers to anyone who holds them. But when it really comes down to it, they aren't that powerful. You can frickin' just run up to anyone holding them and defeat them with some contrived bullcrap. It's not difficult to defeat someone using the Sword of Eden. All you have to do is hide behind a wall or fight someone in a house so that you can have cover. And then, you know, the person holding it is so freaking stupid and oblivious, even though he's completely the opposite of that at the same time somehow, that you could just take him apart in five minutes. Just because the Sword of Eden is ultra powerful doesn't mean Jermaine is, even though he's a sage. And it just undermines the whole damn thing. I honestly didn't know what I was expecting. I knew that Francois Germain, the ultimate antagonist of Unity, wasn't going to be worth half a crap. Because nothing in this game made me interested in his existence, made me believe he was anything more than a shadow under a robe. And the whole thing just fell apart because Ubisoft decided that the Sword of Eden isn't as powerful as it should be. And it devolved into the same stupid combat situation that makes people laugh at the Rodrigo Borgia boss fight in Assassin's Creed 2. You take the ultimate bad guy and you can beat him up just by being normal. You can just normal punch him in the face. It doesn't matter if he has a Staff of Eden, the Shroud of Eden, the Peace of Eden, the Peace of Eden, the other one. It doesn't matter because they're just normal humans. And then the game ends on Lise being buried, Arno being alone, and therefore Arno turns into Batman. Wasn't actually uh, expecting that. Arno turns into Batman. Who would have thunk it?